Emmy-winning composer John Lunn is here with us today. He's uh, written music for lots of uh, British TV dramas, but none of them more famous, of course, than Downton Abbey. And the film version of Downton Abbey is about to open in theaters here in the U.S., and John Lunn has joined us to talk about his soundtrack for that film and his work in bringing Downton Abbey to life with his music. And thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Oh, it's a pleasure. I want to talk a little bit about that iconic theme song that Mm -hmm. you wrote for the series. I mean, most people, you know, they can't separate uh, the music from the series itself. And I've been having that earworm kind of running through my head all day. Oh, dear. Uh, Sorry. (laughs) So so I blame you, but but in a good way. I've heard you tell the story before of how you came up with that theme, and I wonder if you could recount that for our listeners. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, Though I think it was the third my third attempt at it and um the i i have I, i'm a, i'm i'm a real stickler for actually you know working to the picture and in the case of the very first episode there was no actual title sequence um that was going that wasn't going to kick in until episode 2 so it it starts straight off with the drama there's a we cut to a train you know going through the english countryside um, so I picked up on on the energy of that. Um, then we cut to uh, there's a um, a guy called Bates. We don't really know his name at this point, but he, he's looking kind of quite lonely um, out of the train window. We don't know where he's going, where he's come from, but um, he looks very lonely. So I kind of picked out this, you know, sort of high lonely piano tune. Um, so you get the dan 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 and then the next we thing we see the train is also following these telegraph poles and there's we're, we're, the, there's a telegram on its way to say that the air to Downton Abbey has been drowned on the Titanic and so I kind of invested that with a bit more a, a more kind of sort of rising um string tune and then finally we we arrive at a a shot of High Clear Castle itself, which is Downton Abbey, and um, and there the harmony kind of broadens out and becomes a bit more kind of pompous and elegant, and all those four elements—the sort of rhythm of the chugging and train, and the rising string tune, and the, and the solo piano thing, and then the the kind of expansive harmony at the end—all those elements uh, just seem to work in the first episode itself so sometimes you wouldn't get all four of those elements together you'd maybe I'd maybe develop you know something just using one of them or two of them um but that kind of modular approach to the music just worked really well in episode 1 for instance the second uh, cue where we see the servants actually waking up the house i used the same kind of train rhythm because um, the house was like a well-oiled machine itself. It was it was like the train, um, and uh, and it, and everybody was really happy with it with that music. And um, and then I think we and we found quite so so many places to use it um, that I think by the time we got to begin to start work on episode two, um, they asked me to do a thirty-second version of that material, which I did, and then they put the pictures um, actually to the music, which is relatively unusual in my experience i'm you know usually asked to i get the pictures and then i have to you know write the music to that um so that was quite unusual and i think but the most interesting aspect of it was i think if i'd been given those pictures i'd probably have written something completely different because the actual title sequence is really you you don't really see the characters and nor are are there any hints in the visuals of the sort of a le- level of drama and emotion that you're going to see, it's all that's all done being done by the music. Lucky for us, they chose the sequence of images, I guess, yes. to begin the program. Yes, but it, but it all came from the from the the very first scene in episode one. Can you talk a little bit about how you the actual process of composing for a show like Downton Abbey? I mean, are you given a script? Do you know what's going on or do they just provide you with clips how does that work well i mean i i usually read the script but it, it's I, the only reason i read the script is i need to know exactly what's going on in the film 
and well, well, you know, what are the kind of emotional high points and what the what the point of it is and all the nuance between the dialogue between the characters. I absolutely have to know what it's about. Um, and so I, but really, the music's normally the last thing to go on. Um, so the, the the visuals are not going to change. They've already been edited together in a form that everybody's happy with because the music's a lot about the timing between things, to either taking you from one scene into another. And in the case of Downton particularly, you know, it's quite fast. It's actually, for a period drama, it's actually quite fast-paced, you know, in terms of editing. There's also quite a lot of dialogue in it. So, you know, I the music's very carefully choreographed underneath the dialogue as well. So, yeah, it's the final thing to go on. So I wouldn't really be expected to work on just a clip of, you know, a scene or something like that. Um, yeah. You know, it's 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 the whole thing really for me. I need to see, but yeah, God, I need to, I need to know exactly what's going on. When you uh, scored the last uh, season of the series a few years back, did did you have any idea that that they were going to make this film, or when did you uh, when were you brought in? Uh, well, actually, once we finished, uh, once Downton was finished, I carried on working for the same company on different projects. So um, I was always kind of kept abreast of, you know, developments. And certainly before we even finished season six, we there was all right, there was talk of a movie. Um, we didn't really know, to be honest, we didn't really know it was definitely going to happen until I think probably May last year. So... Yeah. And, you know, one minute it was kind of off and one minute it was on. I, as you can imagine, I think it was a nightmare trying to get all that cast together, yeah. you know, in the same place at the same time. Well, what's the, what's the difference for you between writing for TV and writing for a film like this? I mean, is there less time in the TV world because of more content or how does that work? Uh, there's definitely less yeah, there's definitely less time on the TV series. Uh, but in the case of Downton, it wasn't really that different from me because we weren't trying to... It wasn't a remake of the TV series. It was an, actually a direct continuation from where we left off in season six, except we've done it in a movie format. Um, so the kind of content of what the music was doing emotionally isn't that different in the film. Um, but I definitely had a bigger budget. Um, I had uh, more time to write it, a bit more time to experiment, um, and I had quite a bit more time to record it as well and do different yeah. variations. You know that might help us. You know um, when we came to do the the final mix of the movie. Um, so, so there's a bit of more bit more flexibility built in that you just wouldn't have time for in TV. But really. Not that different, really. Did you get to use the uh, same session musicians for this uh, film? Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that you're also in the movie, if, if we look closely. Yeah, you have to look very closely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, t tell us, can you tell us, uh, I mean, without any spoilers, what uh, your involvement is? Uh, yes, um, I'm playing uh, the piano in uh, an illegitimate gay bar in the middle of York. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I've been listening to the soundtrack itself, and I won't reveal any of the, the titles because we have a lot of folks here who are anticipating the movie, but um, there's one piece in particular that kind of stands out for me, and... and that is the the Johann Strauss waltz. Oh yeah, and then it kind of morphs into something else. That's your own original yeah. music. Can you yeah. tell us anything about that? Yeah, I mean that was uh, funnily enough. Um, that was by far the trickiest uh, piece of music I had to write because um, it's the, the so the Johann Strauss is part of it. There's a, a massive ballroom scene towards the end of the film, um, and at the end of that. Um, we, the camera actually moves outside and onto the balcony um, for a very, very specific reason. And um, at, in, I think in the script stage, the idea was that the ballroom music would carry on out to the balcony. Um, 
but it just didn't really, the Johann Strauss was just too sort of formal and just not quite kind of sexually kind of dramatic enough for this yeah. moment. And so so um, it was agreed that um, we would arrange the, the, the Johann Strauss in a particular way that we could metamorphose out of it and back into, you know, Downton Abbey music. But the, the hardest part for that was, you know, to try and to make it kind of seamless so that uh, you're kind of kind of almost you don't you don't see it coming and and uh, and it kind of almost kind of creeps up on you that kind of change in music um, I'm, I'm not kind of distanced enough from it to actually listen to it on its own and see how successful that is but it's certainly in the movie it works really well You know, we have a lot of classical music fans here who also are fans of Downton Abbey because we have a television station as well. And I think some of our listeners might be surprised to know that you've written operas. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I have, yeah. I mean, not yeah. for a while. I haven't written one for about 15 years. But, uh, yeah, I, I didn't, I, I didn't go their hard work. But yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, I did. I've written three operas for Glyndebourne in uh, in in England, yeah. uh, and one for English National Opera. Um, so no, I I I, I did. Uh, I really enjoyed those. But the uh, problem is that I've just been so busy in TV and film that yeah. you know you need you need to take six months off to write an opera. You know, minimum. Well, can you talk a little bit about the the role of of storytelling that your music plays i mean sometimes it's in the foreground sometimes it's in the background what are the ramifications of of trying to bring a story illustrate it with music well i th you know it's massively um important and in the case of downton it sort of works like a, a kind of a shorthand i think it, it it explains the sort of relationships between people almost before you know they've said anything it just informs, you know, almost a kind of uh, what's happened between those people uh, in the past, and you know, and where what direction their relationship might be taking. So sometimes I'm kind of signposting what's going to happen, and other times I'm I'm reacting to it. And some those decisions are usually quite um, instinctual, really. Um, and then, and then also, you know, it's used. Um, to move you from one scene, you know, into another, to set up another scene. In fact, sometimes I'm setting up an incoming scene, you know, before you've even cut to it. Um, so it's doing, it's 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 got quite a few functions, but the, you know, the storytelling element of it is 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 massive. And then, you know, I'm kind of subtly changing the chords underneath the the dialogue sometimes to emphasise the, you know, the points of the dialogue or where where the dialogue is what direction the dialogue's taking us. Well, we've got a big group of folks who are uh, poised to go see the film when it opens here. And, and I wonder if, uh, in closing, if you can just, you know, if you have something to say to the folks at home who are fans of the series that are going to see the movie, uh, what would you tell them, knowing what you know? Well, you're going to laugh a lot, and you'll probably cry a bit. And I think you're probably coming out feeling better than when you went in. I've been speaking with John Lund, the composer for Downton Abbey. The film adaptation opens September 20th here in the U.S. The soundtrack album is also being released on that day. We'll link to it from our website at wgte.org. John Lund, thank you so much for all the music and for joining us here on FN91. Thank you. That was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.